So, after a campaign led by Nicola Sturgeon, the SNP is now the biggest party at Holyrood, with 64 MSPs, one short of an outright majority. The First Minister reportedly made it clear to Boris Johnson that the question of a referendum is now a matter of when, not if, during a phone call yesterday. Well, joining us now is the SNP Westminster leader, Ian Blackford. Mr Blackford, uh, a very good morning to you. Can I just double-check? When the SNP said that the 2014 referendum was a once-in-a-generation vote, why are you not sticking to that pledge? Morning, uh, Susanna. Nice to be on with you. You know, what happened in the referendum of 2014, there was an Edinburgh agreement. There was nothing in that agreement that said that this was a, a once-in-a-generation, once-in-a-lifetime. And crucially, what happened after the referendum, we had the Smith Commission that all parties signed up to, that was about more powers for the Scottish Parliament. And in the Smith Commission itself, it did not rule out a future referendum. And one, one final point on that, Susanna. In the Good Friday Agreement, something that we all support that has brought peace to the island of Ireland, contained within the Good Friday Agreement are the arrangements for a border pole in that island. That's something that can take place once every seven years. It is certainly the case that a lot has changed since 2014, not least leaving the European Union. And of course, we were told in 2014 that if we stayed in the United Kingdom, then our rights as EU citizens would be respected. So we've been taken out against our will. And we were also told that if we stayed in the UK, that we would lead the UK, we well, would be respected. Taken, when you say taken out against will, I mean, it, there was a, a referendum, and of course, because you're part of the union, that was a UK-wide referendum. Just to point out, it was Alex Salmond who said it was a once-in-a-generation uh, vote. You know, you can't deny that that was said at the time of the referendum. What I was pointing out is what was in the Edinburgh Agreement, which was the legal agreement between the two governments in London and Edinburgh, and, of course, what was contained in the all-party arrangements and nothing would prohibit a future referendum. And the point was that the, the vow that was made in 2014 about more powers, about Scotland being a partner in the union, all of that has changed. And, of course, we've seen the Single Market Act that has taken powers away from the Scottish Parliament as well. So it's right in these circumstances. And let's not forget, what happened last week was that ourselves and the Greens went to the people of Scotland with a manifesto commitment that if they voted for us, then they would allow the people to have a say on their future with an independence referendum. We've just won that election, and 72 MSPs in the Scottish Parliament have that commitment to an independence yeah. referendum. Incidentally, the same number of MSPs that supported independence prior to the 2014 referendum. That, that's democracy, and all I'm can saying I, to... Can I just cut you in the, Can I cut in there? I watched the debate the other day, uh, which Glenn Campbell was chairing, no relation, and he raised the point that had been put to him by somebody he knew, and he put the point to Nicola Sturgeon, that this woman had said to him, I want Nicola Sturgeon as First Minister, but I don't want another referendum. Uh, and yet, post the election, you are now counting her vote, I presume, as somebody who is saying, we must now go and get the second referendum. Would you agree that Scotland is still very, very divided and that there has not been the kind of seismic shift that you might need, one, to justify holding the referendum, but secondly, to win it? I think there's two different things, probably three different things, actually, Alistair. One is, of course, that the First Minister has led with her government Scotland through the pandemic. And it is fair to say that a lot of people do support the First Minister and the actions that she's taken and want to see her finish that job. That is absolutely correct. But it was clear in the election campaign, it was clear from her manifesto that we were seeking a mandate to hold a referendum. Now, a mandate to hold a referendum is different than saying that people support it. I fully acknowledge that. But what I say to everybody, and I say to our political opponents, let's have that debate and let's do it respectfully about the future of Scotland, about the type of country that we want to live in, about our desire to deliver a stronger economy, to make sure that we've got the powers to recover economically from the pandemic, to deliver that greener future. One of the things, and I think many people would agree, is that we had that respectful debate in 2014. It was a very engaging debate, particularly with young people. And I think it is right now, given the change of the circumstances that we've had, and that demand that is there. Now, let's not forget that ourselves and the Greens had a manifesto commitment of that referendum. So this has been done legitimately. It's democracy in action. And Boris Johnson, Michael Gold, and anybody else have got to respect democracy. And if you, you take the situation that if you did it in a Westminster context, We've won 62 of the 73 seats first past the post. That's 85% of the seats. Demonstrably, there is very strong support for the SNP, for our First Minister, 
and the idea of having that say yeah, on our future. Yeah, but Ian Blackford, at the moment, people people's minds are on the pandemic, on emerging from lockdown, on making sure that everything is OK uh, after COVID. And it looks like people have voted for the leaders who have been in charge. We've seen that with Labour in Wales, we've seen that with Boris Johnson in England, and we've seen that with Nicola Sturgeon in Scotland. This wasn't a vote for independence, and the polls don't show an overwhelming support for independence. I don't think anybody can be thinking, Susanna, that the SNP stands for Scottish independence, and it was front and centre of our election campaign, but of course you're right. We as a government have a responsibility of taking the country through the pandemic and showing that leadership. What we're talking about is having that independence referendum once we come out of this crisis. We're not talking about doing it before it. We're respecting the situation that we're in. And of course, we want to work with the other devolved administrations, with the government in London, to make sure that we come through this safely. Yeah, do you have when the time? Dealt... Do you have the time to get that all done, get through the pandemic? It's a massive thing. You know this, you know it from the first time. And there were massive unanswered questions about the currency, about the border, about the future of the military. These are huge questions. Are you really saying you've got time to come through the pandemic, have the referendum and get Scotland ready for independence. And by the way, I think you did play independence down in this campaign. Well, the, the questions you're asking are very important ones because much of the discussion over the course of the last few weeks, Alistair, has, has been about the concept, what, the, the timing of any independence referendum. But you're right. The fundamental questions are what type of country, the economic questions, the issues of currency. And I promise you that we will answer all of those questions in detail. We've already done uh, a, a measure of that because the whole point about independence is to change things for the better, to deliver a stronger economy, to show that we can match the growth rates of other small countries in Europe, for example, and to take our responsibilities in defence. Let's have that wide-ranging and engaging debate and let's respect all shades of opinion as we do that. But by the way, as far as currency is concerned, because this is settled within the SNP, we'll be keeping the pound sterling until as such times that a number of economic tests are met and we can navigate towards our own currency. The pound that people have in their pocket today will be the pound that they will have post-independence. All right, Ian Blackford, um, thanks very much indeed. The uh, leader of the SNP at Westminster. Yeah.